So Brenda and John, um, one of the questions that came up was how has HD impacted your relationship and staying positive with all this? You want to go? You want me to go? You. Okay. <laughs> I'll start. It, um, we had a suspicion of something for the last few years. And uh, then as we were doing some ancestry type genetic work, started to see some things that even reinforced that suspicion. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then we had ultimately took a couple of years even then to get to the point where we were able to find and get over to the Fixel Institute and then get the genetic testing. And um, I think it really helped us with understanding a lot of the differences in behaviors and moods and issues and just the, the overall concerns. To, for me, it's helped me understand trying to work to be more patient and um, understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm human, so most of the time I think it's pretty good, but <laughs> can't say all the time. But um, it, it, but I, I think it's drawn us closer together because we end up we do a lot more together where it's both of us, and uh, especially when we were going to doctors mm -hmm. and finding out more information. The two of us going that way. I keep the notes because Brenda I can answer can't the questions. Remember. If I went by myself, then I'm in the stage where I don't remember tomorrow what we went over. So, um, and I used to have, you know, a, a very good mind. And now it's, it's going down. Even I used to bake a lot. And now I can't even do a banana bread from scratch. One one last thing, so we're not taking over, <laughs> but uh, was one of the things we were told uh, at the Institute that really came to, I don't know, fruition is the right word, but anyway, that makes sense is not letting it take over your life, the diagnosis, but in those initial days following it, it does, you think, I got to get this done, I got to get that done, I got to schedule this, I got to schedule that get with the attorneys, do this, do that. And pretty soon we were just absolutely worn out. But then our, then it started to make sense, wait a minute, we can slow down. And, and Dr. McFarland, you even told us that. You can slow down. You don't have to do all this overnight. But yeah. just getting that flood of information. and um, But ultimately it was s slowing down and realizing that, hey, this is for the long term and we've, we've got to work together to successfully manage it. Yes. I know one thing that I remember that I thought was very positive for you both is when you decided to take that nice trip um, where you went to Hawaii, I believe it was. Right. Yeah, we did because it, it's one of those things we've talked about and talked about. And so finally just said, we have to do it. And so let's go. And so we probably decided, planned, and went within three months of deciding to go and took our granddaughter with us, yeah. our, our oldest grandchild. So, so we had a good time. Putting, not putting things off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Go ahead and do those things you've been planning on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Definitely. Brenda, was there anything you wanted to add? Um, no, I can't remember. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, Trevor, if you and Kim are up, um, let me go ahead and, okay. So, so Trevor and Kim, um, one of the questions we had, um, that you might be interested in was you participated in an HD clinical trial. Tell us about your experience and what made you decide to participate. Yeah, um, so hello, everybody. I just want to introduce ourselves real quick before we get into it. This is this is Kim Cope. Um, I'm Trevor Cope. This is uh, my wife. Um, she is uh, CAG 53. Um, she's been symptomatic for about eight years now. 
Um, yes, she was part of a study um, that was was held uh, at the University of Florida. Um, it was a 16 month study um, where it was uh, taking place about uh, prior to COVID, right? I think during, yeah, yeah so about 2018, 2019. Um, it was a study on a drug uh, for inflammation, I believe, of the brain. I, don't quote me on that. I'm sorry. Um, she, uh, Kim has been steady in um, kind of letting us know, you know, whatever she can do, whatever studies that she can do to help uh, the future generation she's going to do. Um, so that was the genesis of it. Um, she actually had a really good time. She made a lot of good friends. Uh, she, you know, she enjoyed her time while doing it. Um, I couldn't say the same because I don't like needles. She was stuck 16 <laughs> times, um, but, but generally a good experience um, for her. Uh, and um, I think at the end of the day, uh, and sorry, if I'm kind of speaking for you, but whatever she can do to help um, the, the, the future studies to, to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. um, for our child yep and that that's another big thing is we do have a daughter who is now 10 years old just had a birthday um and uh she'll do whatever she can for mariah as well so she she really to be a part of anything she can uh, big heart kim thank you thank you for all your participation in the research yeah yeah okay so um sharon Hi. Hi. It is so nice to meet you. I've heard wonderful things about you. Thank um, I know that you run a support group yourself for people with HD and their caregivers. Is that correct? That's right. Every every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Okay. Every Tuesday of every week? Every Tuesday of every week. That's amazing. That's amazing. So um, tell us a little bit about your support group and um, talking about caregiver burden somewhere in there or let us, yeah, just let us know. Okay. Um, I started working with Help for HD International uh, about 11 years ago. And um, when COVID came along, we saw a need for continuing to reach out to our community. And um, that's when everybody started using Zoom technology. So we decided that we would do support group meetings via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so one of the needs that we saw was for caregiver support. So I started doing a uh, virtual caregiver support group meeting uh, every Tuesday afternoon for caregivers who are not at risk and who have not tested positive mm -hmm. for Huntington's themselves. Um, so we have caregivers from all over the United States, um, Canada, and even from the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we meet via Zoom and we also have a chat group in uh, Facebook Messenger so that we keep in touch during the week if there are things that we need to talk about in between. And we've become very close and very supportive to each other, and it's it's made a tremendous difference in dealing with the challenges that that we all face and although we're we're all dealing with different situations you, you know we all say the thing you've met one person with Huntington's you've met one person with Huntington's 
and um, but of course they're common threads, and we we help each other solve problems, and we give suggestions, and um, we work together to find solutions, and um, it just makes a big difference in in coping with the the day-to-day struggles. I really liked what you were saying about the Facebook Messenger where people can kind of check in mm-hmm. as they need to. Um, that's, that's really amazing and very helpful. Um, I have a support group that I run for people with uh, people and their caregivers with HD, but I don't have the ability to do a uh, Facebook messenger every day the same. So that's really quite amazing and quite powerful, I think. Do you have any suggestions on what the healthcare team can do to help? To help with? To help with either the people with HD or their caregivers who are you know, it, it can be a lot of work, a lot of work for people. Do you have any specific suggestions? Um, one of the, the best things, and Dr. McFarland has been really good at this, um, is to be available through email. Mm-hmm. Um because things don't just come up uh, every six months or every four months or however often you go to an appointment at the Center of Excellence. You don't know when something's going to crop up, and it's important to be able to reach out to your health care team, whether it's the neurologist or the psychiatrist or the uh, one of the the therapists speech or physical therapy or occupational therapy it's important to be able to to reach out to somebody and and get an answer and not have to wait um, mm-hmm. until your next appointment so that email, availability or I know some uh, some clinics use a, a patient portal where you can submit um, questions or if you need paperwork signed for something like a reevaluation for therapy or um, in my case uh, I just had to resubmit guardianship paperwork for my son Mm. Um, so things like that it's important to be able to get in touch with your health care team right away and get a response yeah yeah definitely having that immediate contact is uh is very helpful yeah we know that things can turn on a dime Mm -hmm. We have time to do a few more questions. Um, John and Brenda, would you like to maybe field another question? Certainly. Okay. So um, how have medications helped or not helped your HD symptoms and kind of the outlook about where you're going from there? Okay. Um, Yeah, the thing we found out with the medication, it helps, but it's making certain that um, it's the right medication and looking for and being aware of the side effects. Um, Again, one of the things that we we saw after getting the diagnosis and uh, everything being coordinated with the doctor over here, Dr. Monosophy, uh, some of the med- medications that Brenda had it had to be changed, so they changed it. Um, 
and, and there was coordination between both offices, but it was just one of those things that didn't quite react well with Brenda. And she started really going downhill. And we talked to her and I said, you know, this isn't a fast, I don't think anyway, fast progressing disease. You shouldn't be changing like this so quick. Change that medicine and within a day or two, if if we didn't have the diagnosis, we wouldn't have known. Right. It was amazing. So, but the medicine certainly do help, especially with the neurological or the emotional side of it that we mm -hmm. see at this point. So, yeah, very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Brenda, if you don't mind me uh, noting this, I, I do remember that there were some, there are some medications that really helped to improve your mood after after you had been here once or twice, I don't remember exactly when that was, but um, what what was that like for you um, to kind of have that change in, in attitude from, from those medications? Well, between the medication and the diagnosis, both were very important because now I knew I wasn't going crazy or, you know, something worse was happening that um, it was a it was a disease and I study the disease and found out that all these symptoms that I was being diagnosed and treated for wasn't, you know, it was the same symptoms as Huntington's. Mm -hmm. And it was when I made that um, connection to my neurologist that, you know, that was when he said, me over to you all to get a testing um and so the the drugs helped and it helped me feel better once i had the diagnosis too yeah that makes a lot of sense and it and it also kind of takes um a little bit of you know, some some people might blame themselves for for their mood, but when you know that that comes from something physical, that you're not able to control that. Yeah, he blames me for it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we told you, uh, probably talking to most of you, that uh, whenever I'd get in trouble, I always said, "Oh God, I'm getting tr thrown into the tripper shredder again." Yeah, and uh, but it, it really helps so much knowing, knowing why these changes were happening. Yes. And uh, and then being able to support Brenda and work with her and just be there. Just yeah. be there. Yeah. It gives you a sense of control once you know what's behind it and yeah. you feel, you don't feel help, helpless then. Help, that, exactly. I don't you feel helpless, helpless anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again, Brown, Brenda. I said, I don't feel helpless. I feel in control of, yeah. you know, knowing that it's going to get worse, but I, I'm i going to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, I love how you said that. <laughs> I'd like to chime in on the medication. We had a really hard time getting my son's medication uh, to work for him because he takes quite a cocktail of meds. Most, well, all of his meds are psychiatric meds. He's never he's only just now starting to have any movement disorder um mm -hmm. he's 39 his symptoms started at 21 with a psychotic break mm -hmm. and he had severe psychiatric symptoms in and out of uh the Behavioral Health Center and eventually a year in the state mental hospital. Mm -hmm. And when I got him out of the state mental hospital, he went 
into the care of um, the FACT program, which is a, a statewide grant um, program that the purpose is to keep people out of the hospital and try to integrate them back into community living. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a form of it in every county. We moved from Leon County to Bay County, and so we transferred him from, from the FACT program in Tallahassee to the one in Panama City. But when we were in Tallahassee, the psychiatrist there uh, was having trouble getting him stabilized on the medication. So she did something called gene site testing, pharmacogenetic testing. And it was a simple cheek swab and sent it off to the company to find out which medications were compatible with his genetic type mm -hmm. and found out that the antidepressant that she was giving him was not suitable for his genetic type. And where she had been increasing it, it was actually the worst one that he could be taking. And so she switched him from that to the one that was indicated as the best one for his genetic type. And we saw an immediate turnaround. Mm -hmm. And it tests drugs in, in different categories, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, and so forth. And using that, she got him on a cocktail of drugs that finally got him stabilized, and he's been stabilized for 11 years now. Um, we've had to tweak his medicines a few times, and we were told that from the outset that as the disease progressed, um, and the brain changed, there would need to be adjustments made. We just made an adjustment uh, yesterday, adding additional Depakote in the morning because um, we were having some increased agitation and, and defiance. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just being aware of that, but it was no longer the um, the guinea pig approach. Yeah. The gene sight test made a huge difference. That's, that's amazing. I don't know that I was very aware of that. So thank you for that, uh, that good explanation of that. So Trevor and Kim, can I field you all one last question here? Absolutely. So what would you recommend to other patients and families to tell caregivers about HD and how, how do they get the best care? Huh. Recommend um, telling them, I mean, for me, um, and uh, it's patience. It's honestly, it's just being patient, trying to seeing what Kim needs. And it's, it's, it's easy to, um, to try and not be. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, you really just need to um, have a calming um, atmosphere because anxiety and it is a big part of what Kim suffers from. Um, and, and it's easy to, um, I know it's easy to, uh, 
you know, kind of um, dig into that as well. So I try to be a calming voice um, in in those moments of anxiety. Um, another thing she deals with a lot and uh, something that she's been wanting me to bring up is the pain side of it, of course, um, you know, with constant movement all the time and, and the way her body metastasizes pills, you know, um, it, it's kind of managing that and managing um, her activity as well. I mean, if she's out and about all day, really, it, it, it gets tough, um, especially when she comes back home. Um, so uh, really just trying to to try to manage that as best we can. Um, I will say uh, I, we absolutely love Dr. McFarlane. He's, he's amazing. I have to say kudos to him. Always there for us whenever we need him. Um, constant, we, we, yeah, um, Shannon was absolutely right. We're, we're, yeah, the wheelchair came in clutch. He's in this brand new, uh, Ferrari of a wheelchair, which is amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, things happen throughout, um, you know, you never know when something's going to pop up and, and having that aid, uh, of Dr. McFarland has just been absolutely amazing. He's always been there for us, always been there for Kim. So we're so blessed. It's a, it's a terrible thing that, that these families have to go through, but the support um, from the community uh, and, and the caregiving of UF Health has just been second to none and, and it's kept my head on straight. And I think Kim's Facebook. as well. Yeah, Facebook. Oh, yeah. Be part of a face. Kim recommends being a part of a Facebook um, group, support group. Um, there, there's a lot out there. Sharon's one's great. Um, there's There's big ones out there um that that have tons and tons of families um it's it's definitely something that's helped kim um as well so okay so you know we we've talked about um these different groups that are available online um sharon and and trevor could you maybe drop links to those into the chat or either send that to either dr mcfarland or myself at some later point because i'd I'd like to get more people into having some some immediate people who they can at least um, message with on on Facebook. That that just sounds like an incredible resource. Absolutely. Yeah, I wasn't going to interrupt, but I'm going to just say uh, I I didn't pay that Trevor to say that, but <laughs> thank you, um, you guys. But um, maybe I, there's a little we can kind of go if you want. Is there anything else? Um, you guys want to discuss um, or say about Huntington's? You've, you've got the floor. Um, you've got the audience. We're going to let people know about this. Um, you know, we had a bunch of questions just about your experience and what what could you, is there one thing each one of you could say um, to kind of give people advice about how to manage HD and uh, maybe as a caregiver or even as a patient? Um, you know, just let us know. Um, one thing that I wish I learned about a lot sooner was shared solutions. Um, a lot of patients are going to be taking Tiva Astedo. Um, it's, it's one of the most, especially when Korea gets pretty bad. I wish I knew about this a long time ago. Um, but shared solutions, Tiva has a program to help you get a very expensive drug. Um, and it's, it's no cost to us. Um, so, uh, if, if we could have went that route a lot sooner, that that would have saved me a lot of of, of tears. So definitely, definitely that. I'm I'm gonna. I think shared is still is still up, but I think they switched to to have to Teva Cares just for folks. Um, they may have switched back. I'm not sure, but uh, I will check with Teva for you all. But that's, that's a, probably recent. Sorry. <laughs> that, no, no, you're good. Uh, I but Teva Cares was one that was recent, so they have switched a little bit. But same thing support for patients. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, guys. That's support from other individuals that are either have have the disease or supporting someone with it. It just, it makes such a difference. Uh, at our last appointment, sitting, waiting, I was out in the waiting area, start talking to a lady next to me. Now, her husband had uh, Parkinson's, I believe it was, but just talking in what understanding what they've gone through and, and their journey and where they're going. It, I, I told Brenda later, I said, it just, it made such a difference just to hear somebody else talk about it. And 
different diseases, but we still bounce different ideas and different things that we were going through uh, against each other. It helped, helped, helped me a lot. Really and did. I have a cousin who is my same age. We were, there was three of us that all have Huntington's that are born in the same year. And I had reached out and I, but it's only one person. I would love to be a part of that Facebook and being able to reach out and listen to others other than, you know, I, I kind of pick her brain. <laughs> it's, it's, my cousin's wife, who's the caregiver, but I ask her all kinds of questions that have helped me come, you know, completely. So something like the Facebook would be very helpful. I am going to uh, put my email up in the chat. Um, so if people would like to, um, Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. If people would like to send me the link to uh, the Facebook groups that we have talked about, and maybe I can get that information out to others. Um, and just to let you all know, uh, we do have our caregiver group. Uh, I'm sorry, it's for both with people with Huntington's disease and caregivers, we have that on the third Tuesday of every month. So um, if you'd like reminders of that, you could email me and I can get you on our list. I'm going to just, you can thank too, but I'm going to thank all of our folks uh, who joined us, our both patients and caregivers. Um, I know this is personal for each one of you and to come in and talk about your experiences is, is special. And, and really meaningful to other people going through this. Uh, it's meaningful to us too.